How's it going everybody? So in this video, I want to talk about hosting, all things that go into hosting a software application. And if you're new around here, I am building Dinnerbee, and this is a SaaS application that is nearing completion, very close to the MVP stage, and I also have a beta test coming up in a couple of weeks. Now, in order to actually run this beta, I need to have the application hosted somewhere so that my users can actually test it and give me feedback. So I spent the past weekend kind of fiddling around with some different ideas, uh, some different variations of how to host uh, this application. And I was finally able to come to a solution and a decision, get things hosted for what works for me in my use case. So I thought this could be interesting and helpful for other developers who are thinking about hosting their SaaS application. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five different things. The first is kind of the considerations that go into what pieces of your application do you need to host? Second topic is when is the right time to host? There's definitely some different options and considerations for this, so we'll talk about that. Third, I want to talk about kind of the thoughts and decisions that come between uh, choosing a platform as a service versus kind of going your own route, maybe using a cloud provider or some other hosting method. Fourth, I will be breaking down exactly what I am using to host Dinnerbee. And fifth, if you stick around until the end, this should be pretty interesting. I wanna talk about how much I am paying to host my services um, right now with no users, and then maybe kind of what I expect going forward once I start onboarding folks, uh, what those costs will look like going forward. So definitely a lot to cover. This is definitely interesting stuff to me and very important if you're building a SaaS application. So let's jump right into the first section, which is uh, what exactly do you need to host? Now this of course will differ based on what kind of application you're building and what are the components that go into your application. But for myself, I'm building a web application, and for the most part, this will follow the same kind of you know, principles and patterns of what pieces of your application actually need to be hosted. So for myself, I have three different things, essentially. The first piece is a, my front end, which is a React application. So I have this just bundled in its own uh, repository, and this can be hosted separately from everything else. The second is a Spring Boot uh, Java server. And so again, this is its own executable. Um, you know, it builds its own jar file and this can be hosted separately as well. Finally is the data storage aspect of this. So I am running a Postgres SQL database. And once again, this is its own you know, managed entity and can be hosted by itself. So I really like you know, just having these each as their own entity, you can kind of think about it. And you can tackle hosting one piece at a time. Now, of course, this may vary for you if you're running a, a different type of application. If it's mobile, obviously, you're going to have to go through the whole build process and publishing to different um, either iPhone or Android. But in my case, it's really just these three components. And that definitely simplifies things a little bit. Next, I want to hop into when is the right time to actually host your application? This is something that I kind of thought about a lot as I was building Dinnerbee. I, I knew that I was building this all locally uh, for the first two or three months of this project. And at some point I was going to have to deal and tackle the hosting situation. And it was definitely a, a thought that was looming in my mind the entire time. But ultimately I did wait until the application was pretty much completely finished in order to tackle hosting. So there's definitely not a clear cut answer on when the right time to host. But in my mind, it really boils down to, do you wanna tackle that at the beginning of your project or at the end of the project? The benefit of waiting until the end is in some regard, you're probably going to have to pay for hosting. It probably won't be a ton as you're developing and building, but it is a consideration that you should take in mind. You know, if it's gonna take you three to six months to build your application, do you wanna be paying for the hosting the entire time when in theory, you could be running all these services locally? On the flip side of that, you could see it as a motivator, like, hey, I should build this thing as fast as possible so that I'm not charged for my hosting while I don't have any users. The other benefit of hosting upfront though is you kind of can tackle a lot of the challenges that come with hosting in the beginning and just not have this weight looming over you the entire time. So like I knew that there were going to be problems and I knew that there were gonna be decisions that I had to make uh, regarding hosting and I really just pushed those off for as long as possible. If you tackle them in the beginning, you can really just push through a lot of those frustrations that come with it. Mainly I'm talking about things like cores issues or issues connecting to your database, or if you're using you know, other services like I'm using S3, like all of these things I'm having to think about and deal with now at the end of the project, when in theory I could have done at the beginning and, and just not had to deal with all of these problems. You can also get a better feel for your development process if you have everything hosted up front. So again, something that I'm dealing with now is I have all of these uh, resources that are hosted in my like prod environment essentially. 
and now I'm having to like refactor how I do local development because uh, you know my, my local build is not the same as my production build so I have to change out environment variables and just having this process for you know your local development uh, and then a pipeline pushing to your production or development environment uh, is, is really nice to have up front so that when you get to a time when you're ready to onboard users you have a method for shipping new features and you're not just kind of going into it blindly which is what I'm doing right now. So ultimately, there's definitely not one clear cut reason or to choose hosting at the beginning or hosting at the end. Uh, for me, like I said, I did it at the end of my development journey this time. In my next application, I definitely might consider hosting in the beginning, especially since my, my costs aren't super high uh, and it could be a motivating factor for me to finish even sooner. Moving on to the third topic, and this is really important, I think, uh, being able to choose between a platform as a service or going a different route, uh, maybe a less managed approach and doing all of the hosting yourself in maybe a cloud provider or, or some other hosting solution. I am a software engineer in my day to day and I've been using AWS in some capacity for the past four or five years or so. And it really is a lot different working as a solo developer trying to manage all of these AWS resources by yourself versus using them in a corporate setting. Throughout my career, I've normally had uh, either a team, at least a person, but normally a whole team that manages infrastructure and it becomes less of a consideration that I need to take as a developer. So with all of that in mind, I really do think that I overestimated my cloud skills and you know, I'm not a cloud engineer. I don't work in infrastructure and the potential pain that comes with hosting an entire application on something like AWS or some other cloud provider when you don't have a ton of experience doing that is really frustrating. And it is something that you can learn, of course, but you have this other option, which is something like a platform as a service. And so an example of this is Heroku. And essentially all Heroku is, is like a wrapper on top of AWS. And they extrapolate a lot of the you know more technical and decisions that you would have to make inside of AWS. Because when you are hosting in AWS, there are countless options of things that you could potentially choose to add to your environment, different architecture decisions that you will have to make. But something like a platform as a service like Heroku extrapolates all that away and gives you way less flexibility, but also makes the decisions way easier for you. You might have to pay a little bit more for a service like this, but in a lot of cases, you could actually end up paying a lot less with a platform as a service because you can make mistakes in AWS. And if you make mistakes, costs can absolutely skyrocket. So using something that is very managed, has a lot less options is amazing for myself as a solo developer. One, it increases the speed that I can develop at. Uh, you know, there are built-in pipelines. So whenever I push code to GitHub, it'll create a deployment for me. It can be really easy to integrate your database with your server. And in terms of choosing which AWS services are correct for your application, uh, you don't have to worry about any of that because you don't really have those options. It's just, hey, here's some code host this for me, please, and I will give you some money. So again, these are considerations that you have to take when you are thinking about hosting your application. Myself, as a solo developer, I absolutely went for the platform as a service route. I think I was a little over ambitious at first. I spent almost like the entire weekend trying to um, you know, jerry-rig these AWS services to work correctly and, and work how I wanted them to. And the entire time I wasn't entirely sure how much I was going to get charged uh, until these resources were actually created. And then I was able to get my Heroku instance all set up with my database and my backend server in like five minutes. So that has become an absolute no brainer for me going forward. Um, not having to worry about all the pain that AWS can bring. I'll, I'll still use some services like I use S3 and I'll possibly integrate with some other services as well. But in terms of hosting for this application and going forward, I will probably almost always opt for a, a platform as a service and Heroku is my app of choice. Alrighty, on to number four. Uh, let's finally talk about exactly how I am hosting my application. And obviously I gave some of that away in the previous section, but if we're talking about my um, backend server, like I said, this is a Spring Boot application uh, with Java. And yes, I am just hosting that on Heroku. It was incredibly easy to set up. You can literally just connect your GitHub repository for the application for your server. Uh, and Heroku kind of just handles building the jar, um, building the resources that it takes to host that on AWS and just extrapolates all of that away from you. So all you see is this nice deployment pipeline that whenever you push code to that GitHub repository, you have a new deployment that is ready to go. Similarly, for my Postgres database, I was able to set this up through Heroku as well. 
again way less options for this and way less configuration that I had to worry about when connecting my database to my application, my server. Um, so this was incredibly easy to set up as well. For my front end, this is just a React application running on Vite. And I could have done this on Heroku as well. Uh, the only reason that I didn't is because I've hosted these types of applications on Netlify uh, before. And so this is again, another platform as a service that allows you to do mostly just client code and it's super easy and I'm also not paying anything for it. I was able to purchase a domain from a, a third party domain vendor and then connect it inside of Netlify, set up HTTPS with SSL uh, and get that all configured inside of Netlify and also not pay any money for it. So that was a no brainer for me as well. So on to the final section, uh, this is very interesting for me, uh, especially being a solo developer, I'm trying to keep my costs as low as possible. So when it comes to hosting all of this at the moment, like I said, I have no users. I'm curious to see once I start get some, getting some traffic going through in the beta and then tr hopefully onboarding some users after that, these numbers will change a little bit, but I don't think too much. As I was mentioning before, Netlify hosting my React application. This is only client code. I pay $0 a month for this. And from what I can tell, I am nowhere near the quotas that come with the free plan on this. So I really don't see myself really ever having to pay for Netlify. I did purchase a domain through Namecheap, uh, but that was like $12 a year. So if anything, you can say like $1 a month at this point. To host my Spring Boot server, uh, this is currently $7 a month. Heroku has a bunch of different uh, options for like pricing tiers based off of how much uh, traffic your server might see, you know, the CPU and memory that it might need in order to run correctly and run reliably. Uh, so currently I'm on the lowest of that tier, which is $7 a month. And this is kind of the one that I'm curious to see this in the database. I'm curious to see if I'll need to up these at some point. Obviously, if I get a bunch of users and I need to do that, uh, that that's totally fine because $7 at the moment is really just not a large investment. And speaking of the database, they have those same kind of tiers based off of memory and database storage. So currently I'm on the lowest tier and that is $5 a month to host my Postgres database. So currently grand total domain hosting the front end, hosting my server and hosting my database is costing me $13 a month. Again, all of this could have been accomplished using AWS. I really doubt that I would have been able to get it under $13 though. My just knowledge and the amount of options that you have available to you, I probably would have left some setting way higher than it needed to be. And AWS has tons of default settings that are way too high for the application that I'm trying to build. So going Heroku, going the platform as a service route is a decision that currently I'm very happy that I made. So yeah, that will wrap up this video. I hope you took something interesting away from this, especially if you are a solo founder and you're looking for an easy and cheap way to host your applications. Uh, maybe you're using different you know, technologies than I am, but the general principles are all the same. But if you're good at cloud technologies and you can get the costs even lower than that and be maybe more reliable, uh, all the more power to you. And honestly, I'm kind of jealous. If you have any other options and ideas for hosting though, I'd definitely be more than happy to uh, read some comments about that. There are so many options in this space, especially in the, the platform as a service realm. Um, so if you're using something different and it's worked out for you, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to respond to that. Thanks a ton for watching all the way through to the end of this video. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, definitely subscribe and like the video. This is pretty much what I post. I post about SaaS and building software applications. So like I said, really appreciate you watching all the way through to the end. Hope you have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next one.